Welcome to the last video in our internet series. This is all about cloud computing. What's kind of cool, if you look at the entire World Wide Web, cloud computing is kind of the newcomer to this entire world. And even though it's a new kid on the block, it has just exploded. The amount of stuff that you do on the cloud now and the amount of services and things that are available are just staggering. You might have heard of Web 2.0. Well, Web 2.0 is this whole idea of interactivity now between you and web pages, and you can thank a lot of that to cloud computing. The web has become much more interactive. Programs have traditionally been run locally on your own computer. For example, if you wanted to play a computer game, you would have to install the computer game on your own computer and run it from your own computer. Now, we have online games. We have big online games and little online games. Had to kick my son off the computer so I can make these videos today, and he was playing uh, Teen Titans Go from Cartoon Network on the computer. This is all online. Cloud computing is when the program is run on a server. That's the key here. The program is not being run on your own computer. It's being run on a computer out there in the ether that is the internet. You are on someone else's computer and they are taking care of the programming. So basically, you're kind of virtually interacting with your program. And it's been amazing what we've done so far. Some examples of cloud computing are search engines. When you go and search on Bing or Google, you're using cloud computing. Some other computer out there somewhere is doing the processing for you. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games. MMORPG or please take my life. Um, these are fun, by the way. They can become very addictive. You might have heard of games called World of Warcraft, EverQuest, like one of the first ones out there. I'm waiting eagerly for the Ever Ever uh, Scrolls, um, Elder Scrolls, excuse me, online. I'm waiting for that one to come out. Love Skyrim, by the way. We have web-based email, which you talked about in previous videos. We have online shopping, so you never have to leave your house again. You can get groceries. Amazon just announced a new service where you can get groceries if you have an Amazon Prime account. Online job searches. You can look for your next job online. How effective that is, I'm not completely sure. And, of course, we have social media. If you're watching these videos, by the way, on YouTube, you're using a form of social media. YouTube is considered social media in some ways. Search engines. So let's talk about search engines. Search engines are going to crawl websites. What I mean by crawl is that they're going to go website to website. They're going to look at the content you have on your site. They're going to see who's linked to your site, who you're linked to, what are the connections between the sites. That's what we're looking at here. Search engines have really made the internet amazing. Uh, the old days, we used to have programs like Archie and the rest of the Archie crew and it, if you wanted to do a search, you'd put your search terms in and come back the next day and you would send a crawler out to go and see what was out there. Now, with the real-time search, you can type in words and the search results are starting to show up before you even hit enter. Categorize information for user search. And the power of Google and Bing is immense. If you're just using Google or Bing, just using it, you're missing out on a good portion of the power that these things have. And of course, the two big search engines as I said a second ago, are Google and Bing. Now, you might say, but what about Yahoo? No. All of the other search engines that you might run into actually get their information from these two primarily. These two are pretty much it as far as the search engines go. Google, of course, being Google and Bing being a Microsoft product. So those are your search engines right now. The MMORPGs. Okay. I am a fan of the online games. I have played EverQuest. I've played Star, Star Wars Online, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic Online. Again, Warcraft, been playing that for years. Played a whole bunch of things, and I'm kind of waiting for the, um, like I said, the Elder Scrolls, the new version of that. I'm really waiting for that one. I'll be taking some <laughs> sick days, which unfortunately, problem of working for yourself is the boss knows when you're calling in to fake it. Um, anyhow, but massively multiplayer online games are large game worlds full of people from around the world. I remember I used to play uh, what was it? Um, the Heroes game, the, which I'm totally drawing a blank of. City of Heroes, that's it. Uh, I don't think it's uh, online anymore. And it's very common to be playing with people from all around the world. You're playing with people from 
across the pond. I mean, this is kind of cool when you're playing with folks all around the world. And so this is a pretty cool thing. Your online games can range anywhere from free to play as far as they don't charge you anything to play. They might have in-game purchases. I hate those, by the way. Uh, other ones might have a subscription fee. So, for example, Blizzard, who's the company who makes uh, World of Warcraft, they basically print their own money. Uh, they have a monthly subscription rate you pay and you play. By the way, I will put a screenshot right here. If you play World of Warcraft, feel free to send me a in-game email. I will be happy to add you to my guild. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be raiding a dungeon together. And by the way, Alliance. No horde. Ugh. <laughs> Anyhow, shopping online. Like I said, you never have to leave your home again for all those people who hate people. This is perfect for you. You're living a great day and age because you never, ever have to see anyone else ever again you can buy everything online also online shopping has opened the doors to entrepreneurship that have never been open in fact i am one of these online entrepreneurs between doing my youtube videos for example this entire online series for introduction to computers the reason why it can be free is because of ad revenue the more subscribers i get the more people who watch this the more money i make it doesn't cost you anything it doesn't cost your school anything it's because of ad revenue from youtube uh, so that's also a marketing thing. For example, you have some uh, YouTube people out there making lots of money. Jenna Marbles is kind of like the queen of YouTube. You have Tabascus, who my kids love. You have Paul Source Jr. If you're a Minecraft fan, you have to subscribe to his videos. He's got great family-friendly tutorials. You have Annoying Orange, who's making six figures at least. So you have this amazing opportunity for people. Millionaires are made without even having a physical store. Some great examples of some online stores, and we're talking about online stores only. They don't have physical, you can go in and shop stores, Amazon, one of the massive companies out there. They are probably one of the reasons why Borders booksellers went out of business because Amazon came up with a Kindle. Borders wasn't ready for it. Borders was not keeping up with the new technology. Barnes & Noble's having a hard time too, by the way because of Amazon and when Amazon started with their digital readers. Think Geek, you've heard me talk about them before. They are a great place to spend lots of money on geeky stuff. Jinx, also another geek place. This is more for your uh, gamers. They have great gaming gear. So if you were offended by me saying about Alliance and you're like, for the horde, then go to Jinx. You can buy your for the horde shirts. Um, anyhow, and then you have a Zappos, which is a shoe store. I mean, you have some amazing things that are going out there online job searches you have lots of different search engines where you can look for jobs you have monster.com careerbuilders.com career builders has some great funny commercials i would say those two monster.com careerbuilders.com i you know if you put a resume out there and i've used both of them and in fact i have resumes on them still you get a lot of emails for sales positions and you're going, why would I want the sales position? There's nothing in my resume that... Anyhow, you got to be careful with those. Uh, indeed, beyond these, from my understanding, from what I've seen, are more aggregated sites where they combine other results. Hotjob, Dice.com. Dice.com is a great place if you're looking for technology positions, IT positions, training positions. There's also other specialized sites out there. For example... Because I'm an educator, I also subscribe to different education sites. Uh, I think that higher education jobs is one of them for adjunct professors. You have other sites that cater specifically, like when I was working for the FBI and the intelligence community, online sites that cater specifically to uh, veterans. They also have sites that cater towards people with security clearance. Obviously, if I work for the Bureau and the intelligence community, I had a couple of clearances, and so you could look specifically for jobs there. Don't also forget... Places like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional networking site. It is not Facebook. You do not put your personal crap on there. Pictures of the family. Nobody cares about that. LinkedIn is a professional website. It's a networking website. But we always talk about three to five good links that I would recommend checking out so you can see more if you're interested. Here are my top four for you. You have W3 Schools. This is a free site where you can learn all about doing web coding. They have schools on HTML coding, all this stuff. It's all free. I use it. As I said in the previous video, if you do any web design, you need to know HTML. This is a good place to go. How do I do that again? So good place to check out. HostGator, we talked about web hosting. 
When you create a web page, you have to have web hosting. I'm not getting paid from them as of the making of this video. There's no advertisement here. I like HostGator for three reasons. One, they have a great rate on their hosting and all that good stuff. Two, they're based in Houston, go Texas. And three, I actually have a couple of former students of mine who work for them. So HostGator is who I actually have um, a few of my websites through. URL shorteners, you have two to choose from. If you have a huge, uh, em a huge URL, for example, the next one has a huge URL, you don't want to put the whole URL there. Let's say you're on Twitter or something like that. You can shorten the URL and you can use Bitly. These are all free services. And of course, Google has their version that you can uh, truncate. You can shorten the URL. And finally, I'm putting a video in here specifically. It's from the IT crowd and it's called the Internet. And because we talked about the Internet, it is a very, very, very funny uh, television series out of the UK. It's on BBC. It's available on Netflix if you have Netflix. And it's definitely worth checking out. It is very funny. And it's all about this IT group and the adventures they get into. I would say it's probably PG-13 as far as overall rating. Some language can get a little saucy at times, but it's not every episode. Um, but it's very funny, especially if you're an IT person and you like computers. But this particular video... Check it out. It's a short video, and it talks about the Internet. Okay, we've talked about a lot. This has been a long series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed so far, please do so. If you've enjoyed this series, if you have comments, if you have suggestions, if you just want to say hello, feel free to contact me at my email, mrford at mrfordsclass.net. You are more than happy to contact me at my Facebook page, which I'll put the link on. You can, of course, leave comments here on the YouTubes. So until our next series of lessons, which will focus on telecommunications, I hope you all are doing well in your courses, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.